Pauls Jr. had been voicing his discontent about Paul's leadership to anyone who would listen. He criticized Paul so harshly that he claimed he couldn't even see Paul as a proper boss. One day, Paul overheard these complaints, and now, they are embroiled in a heated dispute. Paul should have known how crucial it is to support and take care of his team members to maintain their respect and loyalty. Meanwhile, I had been offered an exciting position at our overseas headquarters. I had been turning it down due to the ongoing issues at home and out of consideration for Paul, who seemed to be struggling. But after much deliberation, I finally decided to accept the opportunity. Now, I am in the midst of preparing for my transition, which has caused my father some concern. To alleviate his worries, we've started practicing video calls so we can stay connected once I'm abroad. I feel a deep sense of contentment because this job is something I've dreamed of since childhood. It's a chance to give it my all and achieve my career aspirations. At home, Paul rarely helped with household chores, but Michelle didn't mind. When they went out together, Paul always took the lead, allowing Michelle to relax and enjoy herself without any worries. It felt like they had a good balance in their relationship, with each one compensating for the other in different aspects of their lives. However, everything changed when Michelle's mother passed away unexpectedly. While Michelle was at work, her father called to inform her that her mother's health had taken a severe turn for the worse and she had collapsed. Michelle rushed to the hospital, but by the time she arrived, it was too late. She said her final goodbye to her mother and decided to stay with her father to help arrange the funeral. In this time of grief, Michelle needed Paul's support more than ever. When she called Paul to inform him, he said he couldn't leave work suddenly. He missed the wake and only managed to make it to the funeral. Even then, it seemed like he hadn't prepared properly for the occasion, arriving without appropriate attire. In the midst of her mourning and the chaos of organizing the funeral, Michelle had to find him suitable clothes. Instead of being understanding, Paul complained, saying she should have prepared his clothes earlier. This lack of empathy and his complaints were too much for Michelle to handle, so she chose to ignore them. However, Paul remained in a bad mood, which only added to the tension. Since then, their marriage has been fraught with arguments. While it's normal for couples to have disagreements, especially after three years of marriage, Paul's behavior has become increasingly aggressive. He frequently picks fights and insists on telling Michelle what to do, taking charge in a way that feels overbearing. Michelle, growing tired of this dynamic, started to assert herself by saying no more often. However, Paul seemed clueless about where things were in the house, making even simple tasks take a long time. His constant complaints while trying to help only made things worse, creating more mess and frustration. Eventually, Michelle realized that it was easier to just handle everything herself, even though it left her feeling overwhelmed and underappreciated. I always tried to do everything Paul asked of me, though I took care of some tasks myself to make my life easier. For instance, I had been preparing for the gathering to commemorate my mom's first death anniversary next week. I had mentioned this to Paul several times over the past few months to ensure he was aware and could make arrangements to attend. One evening, as we were discussing our plans for the week, I reminded Paul about the gathering. Okay, I said, expecting his acknowledgement. But instead, Paul grumbled, I have an important meeting that day. What should I do? I felt a wave of frustration wash over me. I've told you about this gathering well ahead of time. How could you suddenly say you can't make it? What, you're not coming? I asked, trying to keep my voice calm. Paul let out a heavy sigh. It's not that, but it'll be hard to leave everything to my subordinates, you know, he replied. He had been very pleased with his recent promotion and often talked about how he was mentoring his junior team members. I felt like sighing right along with him but tried to stay composed. Please make arrangements for it, alright? I stressed, hoping he would understand the importance of the event to me. It was the day before my mom's first death anniversary gathering when I returned home from work. The moment I walked through the door, I could sense the tension in the air. Paul was sitting in the living room, sulking and drinking beer. Sorry, sorry I'm late. Had to do overtime, he mumbled as I put down my bag. I figured he was upset because I was late, delaying dinner. I've been waiting here for an hour. Just as I expected, he said, his tone laced with irritation. But it's only an hour, right? If you couldn't cook, you could have bought something. I did tell you when I'd be home. You could have taken some initiative, I thought to myself, trying to keep my frustration in check. I handed him a takeout box. I thought cooking would take too long, so I got this on my way home. In response, Paul slammed his beer glass on the table, causing some of the liquid to spill. Take out again? Aren't you slacking off a bit too much lately? I was taken aback. The last time I got takeout was about two weeks ago. Sure, I've been busy and maybe I haven't cooked every day, but I still make sure to eat balanced meals and avoid relying on packaged food too much. I didn't think I deserved his criticism. 
As I debated whether to respond, Paul, misunderstanding my silence, added insult to injury. Can't argue when it's true, huh? Do your chores properly. You've been coming home late and claiming overtime. Maybe you're out cheating. Paul's words ignited the resentment I had been feeling. If you know I'm working late, the least you could do is make dinner. You don't have to cook, picking up takeout isn't that hard. I always tell you when I'll be late, and even with my busy schedule, I handle all the household chores. There's no need for that attitude, I snapped, my voice trembling with anger. Paul glared at me, his face contorted with disdain. You're three years older, remember? I could have married a younger woman, but I chose you, he said, expecting gratitude and obedience. You should be thankful and listen to me. No one else would want you, so you'd be in trouble if I left, right? Did he really just say that? I was furious and couldn't hold back anymore. If you wanted a younger woman, you should have married one before we got together. I asked if you were okay with me being older, and you said yes. That's why we got married. Even without you, I can manage my own life, I retorted, my voice shaking with a mix of hurt and anger. Paul laughed mockingly and said, fine, let's get a divorce. With that, he grabbed his beer and takeout and stormed off to his room, leaving me standing there in stunned silence. We'd argued before, but this was different. This time, something had broken inside me. I was done with him. Trying to calm my racing thoughts, I sat down to eat my takeout. Maybe he was just hungry and annoyed, I thought, trying to rationalize his behavior. But I couldn't shake the disbelief that this was happening, especially the day before my mom's death anniversary. After a while, I mustered the courage to speak to him again. Standing outside his room, I called out, we need to leave by 8 a.m. tomorrow, so I'll wake you up around 7. There was no response, but I could sense he was awake, seething in his silent anger. With nothing more to say, I went to bed, though sleep eluded me for most of the night. The next morning, I woke up early, only to find Paul already gone. The bags I had packed for our trip still sat in the room, untouched. He hadn't left for the gathering without me. Where did he go? I called his phone, but he didn't pick up. He didn't respond to my texts either. With no other option, I left a voicemail and started getting ready to leave alone. I finally reached Paul while waiting for the train at the station. I have a meeting, can't leave it to my juniors, was all he said before abruptly ending the call. I was overwhelmed with a mix of anger and resignation, feeling stunned and bewildered. Before I could dwell on it further, the train arrived. Burdened with luggage meant for two, I boarded alone. Upon reaching my father's house, he asked anxiously, where's Paul? Seeing my father's sadness since my mother's passing, I didn't want to add to his worries. Taking a deep breath, I forced a smile and replied, sorry, he got called into an important meeting. He was supposed to come, but with his recent promotion, it sounded crucial, so I encouraged him to prioritize it. My father nodded in understanding. I understand he's working hard. It's disappointing not to see him, but your mother would understand. Let him know he's always welcome here. His words stung a bit, but I maintained my smile. Throughout the day, with no word from Paul and the night growing late, I didn't reach out to him either. Planning to stay the night and return home the next day as planned, I saw no need to contact him. Though it felt childish, I thought about making him his favorite dish, hamburgers, tomorrow. With that in mind, I went to bed. The next day, I left my father's house and got home around noon. Before going grocery shopping, I wanted to drop off my bags. As I entered the living room, I saw Paul's dirty laundry strewn about as usual. I sighed, thinking he still hadn't learned how to use the washing machine, and tossed his laundry in with mine. Taking a break and returning to the living room, I noticed something on the table. As I got closer, I couldn't believe what I saw, divorce papers, already signed by him. Why? I stared at the papers in disbelief. Was this his way of asking for a divorce? I grabbed my phone from my bag. It should be Paul's lunch break. I wasn't sure if he'd answer, but to my surprise, he did. As soon as he picked up, I asked, what's the meaning of these divorce papers? Paul laughed, a cold and bitter sound. What's there to question? It's exactly what it seems. I don't want an older wife who won't handle house chores. That's why I want a divorce. If we split, I can find a younger wife. After all, a wife is like a status symbol, right? I can't boast about you because you're older. It's tough when my team asks about you, and avoiding the topic isn't easy. I was speechless, unable to respond. If you want to avoid a divorce, start doing your chores properly. I'll be home as usual today, so make sure to get some beer, alright? If you disagree, take the divorce papers to court. It's your call. With that, he hung up, leaving me in shock, unable to utter a word. Paul probably assumed I'd comply if he said that. I only did the chores because I disliked having to ask or beg him. He must have believed I did it to keep him from leaving me. 
Perhaps he thought I wouldn't stand up to him because he's the dominant one. Being married to a younger husband might seem glamorous to some, but in reality, there's nothing remarkable about it. I often emphasized his youth, but in truth, his looks, personality, and income were average at best. When we first got married, I was worried about our age gap. Even though it was only a few years, the difference seemed significant to me. Now that we're both in our 30s and he's just three years younger, it doesn't feel as important. If the gap had been larger, maybe it would have affected me more. It was disheartening, though, to constantly be labeled as the older wife when our ages were so close. That label felt unfair and stung every time I heard it. Determined to take control of my life, I decided to take drastic action. I grabbed my bag, filled with a mix of nervousness and determination, and headed straight to the family court. Submitting the divorce papers brought an unexpected sense of relief. It was a clear signal that our relationship had ended, and with that came a newfound sense of freedom. I realized, perhaps for the first time, that I could live without Paul. The weight lifted from my shoulders, and I felt lighter. To clear my mind and celebrate this new chapter of my life, I decided to request a few days of paid leave from my boss. Fortunately, work had just slowed down, and he granted me a week off. With the divorce now official, I turned my attention to organizing my belongings. I didn't have much to pack, so cleaning up was surprisingly easy. I stored larger items in a storage unit and packed my essentials and clothes into my car. On a whim, I decided to visit a hot spring resort. It was the off-season, and I found a cheap hotel without any hassle. The drive to the resort was filled with excitement and a sense of adventure. When I arrived, I immediately indulged in the hot springs, letting the warm waters wash away my stress. Later, as I relaxed in my room, my phone rang. Michelle, I asked you to get beer, didn't I? Where are you? It was Paul, calling at his usual time to return home. I couldn't help but chuckle. I'm at a hot spring resort. What? A hot spring resort? What's going on, he asked, confusion and frustration evident in his voice. Didn't you say to file the divorce papers if I didn't agree with you? I pictured him flustered, and my laughter grew. Wait, did you really file them, he asked, his voice rising. Yes, I did. Why, he demanded. It was your suggestion, Paul. Have you forgotten what you said earlier? His tone became more perturbed. Wait, are you joking? When you say hot spring resort, do you mean some nearby spa? If so, I'll get dinner, so come home soon. The sudden shift to a seemingly caring tone was almost laughable. It took about an hour and a half of driving. There's even an outdoor natural hot spring. It's so relaxing. I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow. Since you're going to get your own dinner, I've already packed my things so you won't have to worry about me coming back. Take care of yourself. Paul started to beg me to return, but I was resolute. You're the one who initiated the divorce. Have you forgotten? It was obvious you were using divorce as a threat to control me. I told you I can manage without you. Now that you've divorced your older wife, go find a younger one. Whether you can or not, I don't know. Paul fell silent for a moment before speaking again. It's none of my business, but you should consider moving out of that apartment too. Why should I? His voice was barely audible, filled with uncertainty. Think about your income. You'll go broke soon if you keep living there. You can't clean, do laundry, or cook. You'll need housekeeping and dining out, right? That costs money. It would be a serious problem if most of your salary went into rent. You always thought you were the provider, but the truth is, my salary is nearly double yours. You never really provided for me, if anything, it was the other way around. You were overly confident just because you had one junior working under you. Did you know I have multiple juniors reporting to me and even more under them? I don't usually talk about work because Paul gets moody, but the reality is, I outrank him in both position and salary. You'd think he would notice after living together for so long, but it seemed like he was just finding out now. Perhaps Paul's dominant and proud nature kept his ego intact by looking down on me. Now that he can't do that anymore, he must feel defeated. Shattering his pride feels like payback for all these years of his condescending behavior. I handled all the household chores without complaining, despite your domineering attitude, partly because you were younger and I wanted to cut you some slack. It was also partly because it was too much hassle to ask you for help. It's not like I needed you to stay with me, I was simply taking care of your needs along with mine. So when you said, do the chores or we divorce, it was easy for me to choose divorce. We're strangers now. Goodbye, I said. I hung up the phone, feeling a wave of refreshment wash over me. I then savored the hotel's food, enjoying a moment of peace. As expected, Paul sought reconciliation, but I replied with a smile, I'm older than you. I'm sure you don't want me back. Presumably, he wasn't successful with younger women. Eventually, Paul gave up and moved out of the apartment. 
I hired a lawyer to handle the division of our assets, demanding more to compensate for the burden of household chores I had shouldered until now. Paul, being cheap, didn't hire a lawyer, so I had the upper hand. My lawyer and I reached an agreement with very favorable conditions for me. By the way, it seems Paul's only junior had been complaining to others about his poor leadership to the extent that he couldn't even see him as a boss. Paul overheard this, and they're currently in a dispute. He should have realized how crucial it is to support his own junior. As for me, I've been offered a position at our overseas headquarters. I initially declined the offer due to the current circumstances and out of consideration for Paul, but I finally decided to seize the opportunity. I'm now preparing for my transition. Though I've caused my father some worry, we've started practicing video calls to stay connected when I'm abroad. I feel content knowing I'll be pursuing the job I've dreamed of since childhood. It's time to give it my all and fully embrace this new chapter in my life.